Hey guys, this is Angus, and in this episode I'll be showing you how to wire up and make your first radio-controlled robotics platform. Okay, so what sort of tools are you going to need? Basically, the most important tool you'll need for wiring your robots is a soldering iron. So, you can go basically any budget. This is the first soldering iron I ever bought. It's about $20 from Jayco Electronics. And you can go all the way up to something like this. This is a soldering station. It costs like $400. But the difference is this heats up in 3 seconds and this heats up in about 5 minutes. So, whatever. This works fine. And it's just basically your skill will determine how good your solder joints are, not the machine. So, it's not the tool, it's you. Um, other tools you'll need, uh, pliers. You can strip wire just using side cutters. These are some nice side cutters I've had for a few years. Um, or you can actually buy these sort of things. These are sort of full-on, uh, see if you can see it, full-on uh, production use wire strippers. So you put the wire in and just do that, and you can strip wire really quickly. Completely unnecessary, but fun to have. Put that over there. Um, and for checking your wiring, a multimeter is pretty much essential. This thing can save you from blowing up hundreds of dollars worth of speed controllers. That's basically it. You can check voltages of your batteries to make sure they're not too flat. You can make sure the polarity of your batteries are correct before you blow up your controllers. And you can check for short circuits, which is really important for preventing any sort of battery fires or anything dangerous like that. So, again, this is a more expensive model, but they're about $15 from Jayco Electronics, so go grab one. Uh, nice beefy scissors for cutting wire, or just bigger side cutters, it's fine. And for assembling the robot, you'll need at a minimum a cordless drill, which you should already have, if you've gotten this far. Um, an Allen key for uh, these M6 button head screws, or just a screwdriver if you end up getting just Phillips heads, and a socket head for, uh, for the M6 nuts. So what I've got here are parts which can be used in basically every consecutive robot platform that you build. They're basically a one-off purchase. So I'll go through them. Basically, to control your machine, you'll need some sort of radio control unit. So I've got two different kinds here. This one you can call a pistol controller. Uh, these are used mostly for radio controlled cars and that sort of thing. I prefer to use them for really fast wedge robots and that kind of thing. I, I like to use these. However, a lot of other people like to use this kind, which are stick radios. Uh, the differences are obviously you control this using the six on either side. This has six channels, so you control up to six different things in the robot, whereas this one only has two channels plus a third sort of button channel which might activate a weapon but it's not very um, very good because it doesn't give you slight control. So you only have to buy one radio control. They're actually really cheap these days. This one back in its day was like 300 bucks but now you can get them for about 60 for a really good one. And then you have the receivers which sit inside the robot. So this is a six channel receiver, this is a three channel receiver. Um, they sometimes get smashed but this is like six dollars so whatever, they usually last quite a while. And then you have your batteries. So for your remote controlled uh, robotics platforms, I would recommend using lithium polymer batteries. Basically, for the reason that they've got extremely high power density for their weight, they're quite cheap these days, and there's a lot of hobby level chargers that are out there that will let you charge these and keep them going for a long time. The only problem with lithium polymer batteries is they are quite dangerous. If they get punctured or short-circuited, they will combust. So whenever you're charging these, always charge them on a surface which can't catch fire, such as like a, a tile or something like that. And when you have them in machines, always keep them protected. So lots of foam, hard casing, that sort of thing. And lithium polymer fires are no fun to have in your machines, and you'll probably get everything else burnt out by the fire. So. Yeah, be careful with your designs. Regarding charging these batteries, uh, there's a few options. You can go as low as cheap as something like this. This is a tiny trickle charger which you can buy for about $10. And it plugs into the wall and it just puts out a constant rate to the battery through the balance leads. Uh, and that's another thing. Lithium polymer batteries have balance leads which balances each cell inside the battery. So this is a four cell battery. And so it has a balance lead for each of those cells. 
Uh, the chargers that you can buy for lithium polymer batteries will have a balance plug on them as well. This is a very old uh, charger, so it's external, but these days are usually built into the charger. And that's absolutely necessary if you're going to be using lithium polymer batteries. But I'm not going to go too much into it because each charger is different. Just read the manual and learn how to use it and just be safe and then you'll be fine. Uh, this is a power supply which are used for most of the high power chargers. This is a 12 volt power supply. So you plug it into the wall and it puts 12 volts out for the chargers. Uh, you can get these on eBay, um, but you can also buy from Hobby King complete ready to run uh, power supplies full chargers. So I would recommend that if you can. And yeah, so now I'm going to move on and show you all the robot parts that you'll need to make this platform.